how this off spawn is going to go off. Game two, and it looks like we got CDY, Spider, Burst, 225, all rolling in with the Fireflies. Now, CDY, not it gets, I think he's able to get one Firefly over here. But two, Spider pieces out, looks for the armor and said, same with 225. Tough scenario for these guys. But we're going to transfer over to Mike versus Star. Getting a nice ISO one going. A Tessa on his own. Able to dodge that 55% ultimate. Mike keeping up the pressure. Star is going to fold under the pressure like a blanket. And Mike is going to start out with that critical first blood. Yeah, absolutely huge for Mike here. Doing what Mike does best. When we come back over to CDY, like you said, he was able to get that one crucial Firefly here. WBG Spider, though, coming in on the Akko's pick. has got quite a bit of rage buildup, trying to use those range shots to go ahead and get that ultimate online. Both of them extremely close. They're going to have that ult here very, very soon. But WBG Spider with a huge uppercut combo here off of the dagger. Wolves in a bad place. He goes for the armor swap, but the armor's empty here. CDY is going to have to try to turn this around. Oh, my goodness, no. He's in the elbow. He's got to find it, but... Spider is able to get the read and comes out on top. This is really unfortunate for Wolves CDY. This is exactly what he does not want to see when he's playing onto that Tarka pick there. Spider will find the whips. He's going to look for another one there onto Verse. This is going to be a hard matchup for Spider, who with no ultimate into the hottie pick, he's going to have to do something drastic to get away from this here. Spider will come in, but Verse is going to find the parry there. Goes into the uppercut. It's downhill. Oh my goodness. WBG Spider gets the F up back on time before he gets juggled all the way downhill there. Spider will be able able to break away here versus looking to come in he holds on to a little bit of that old charge and he's going to be able to clean up the elimination there spider tries to climb the wall but he's not quite able to make it raven we're transferring over to oh ug's mike shaw taking to the skies with a rano duking it out 1v 1v1 mike going into the house slowing things down wang lang coming in with the v2 coming with the freeze trying to get the assassinations play unable to find the low hp target now mike coming out with full health able to go in and with wang lang using his ult not getting that critical burst any one of these targets are able to get taken down now mike choosing to go against arano is gonna go for the light attack he has to be careful though wang lang not willing to back off right now even though he has no ultimate he is gonna come in and arano with the fade out fakes it out get a big parry onto Mike. Mike able to get around the corner though, able to line the side, looks for the double charge, not able to find it. Wang Lang goes and blindsides him with the draw down, able to find a kill. Shaw frustrated, wants to kill for himself, but Wang Lang is going to be picking up his first eliminations now. Shaw versus Wang Lang, 1v1, double hold's going to come out. Nice cancel's going to be coming out with the grapple cancel to deny the possibility of parry. Wang Lang does have that purple armor, wants his Isis off, get that health up, and take another round over against GG Shaw. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Wang Liang here. This is a player I absolutely never count out, right? XCG is Wang Liang when he first came in during the very first season of the Rock Blade Point Pro League. Absolutely dominated the field with both the Nunchucks and uh, our boy Takeda. Coming in here on the Justina, this is one of his favorite picks as well. He was able to clean up that elimination. Just comes in here on Arano with a very simple uppercut combo here off of the Nunchucks. Does a ton of damage. Sees the player low. Is able to slide in and pick up the final elimination there on the GG Shaw. Really good target selection coming out of Wang Liang. He's got the ult in the back pocket here as well. He's going to go low here, but he's going to be able to get up. No, both players are going to make it so hard for him. He's going to come in with the meter dump. He's got to wait for this meter dump to go away. Will he find the refreeze onto Arano? He's trying to change the target acquisition or at least find another elimination. Oh my God, he finds a third one here, ladies and gentlemen. He does have the revive as well. Really good decision making coming out of Wang Liang here. He knows he's got no escape from both players. So he's just able to come in and lock down one of the players and goes, I'm going to find another elimination before I head back and take the resurrection. Big, big play from Wang Lang. Like you said, uh, Rune, it's about those decision making and damage controlling when you're not able to win. You're going to see Wang Lang come out with three kills, but Verse with the clutch play denying the soul bloom. If Wang Lang's able to get that soul bloom, he possibly could give the Verse a run for his money. So Verse doesn't risk it, immediately plays for soul bloom, denies that heal, denies that ult charge, and both of these guys up to three kills. And this is what I was saying that. 
in the top eight. It is neck to neck. It is cutthroat. It is not at all a guarantee for Spider or Mike to ship this. Now, it's going to be how these guys space out their characters as they move through the phases. You're seeing Spider on the Temi. He is able to open up and find the kill. Mike on the S tier pick. Hottie, it's really up to Mike to pick up the pace and really pop off this game. Now, unfortunately for him, Spider has done his homework. And this is what I'm saying, Rude, that Spider has done his homework. Tammy, a good answer to Hottie. So if he does go against his rival going into this first round with Yang, he's going to have a great answer outside of Yang, inside of Yang with that Temi ult for that great reset. Now, first, before we go into Ramo Yang, we got a Rano versus CDY. F1's going to be invested. Rano has no armor to the name. Big chip damage coming out from CDY. Death by a thousand cuts. Rano trying to break line of sight using this rooftop. Able to get that max range grapple. But modern day glyphs. Everyone got max distance grapple now. It's really hard to get away. CDY with the close of spacing. Gonna get that overhaul deep fry and send Rano packing. This is huge for CDY. He doesn't have to invest his F or his ultimate here, crucially, to pick this up. He's sitting right on top of a Realm of Yang. He is playing Tarka. He needs to head inside that Yang and uh, try to find the matchup. Try to find that momentum to carry into the game. You know, when you're playing Tarka, you can't really bank on closing out and taking control of those final zones. He needs to find his eliminations throughout the game and really start to scale into the mid game. Mike here waiting as well for the Realm of Yang, both him and CDY looking to pop in as soon as possible. Who's going to get it? We're going to see CDY is able to get in. He's going to be versus JDG's verse, and it's going to be KLA's T225 versus OUG's Mike. CDY versus verse. This is going to be a big moment for CDY. If he hopes to catch Mike, it has to start here versus already having a stellar performance right now. Hottie versus Panaman CDY has his work cut out of him. Tarka versus Hadi, not an easy matchup. Can he burn through the Kuda? He does get the gold F out. Almost gets the infinite going. Crowd's going a little bit wild. He's looking to come up there, but Verse wisely staying on the top. Isn't gonna risk getting TOD. Not today, folks. He's gonna show Tarka with his burn damage as Hadi flying Tarka versus ground Tarka. Old school versus the new school. Can CDY make a name for himself? Show everyone that OUG made a, a mistake on him. Verse is going to come in with a triple charge, get that burn damage on to Tarko. Rare do you see Tarko's being burned alive right now, but it's looking extra crispy for my man CDY against the ropes. Jump parry is going to come out on verse, but CDY doesn't release. He releases this time, so he's bringing it back. It's down to even 20 seconds left. It doesn't look like we're going to be going to a tie. First, he's going to get that scale rush and secure the kill. Oh my goodness. I'm sure CDY right now is having flashbacks to worlds in that realm of Yang versus Frog. Frostivus, and then the rematch they had in the final game of Worlds, Frostivus on Hadi versus our boy at Panda Man there on the Tarka pick. They go one for one. I'm sure he is not happy about that result, but CDY still got it to do. He is on that Tarka pick. He's got to come back out. He's got to find an elimination against the odds here. He's got to find that isolated 1v1 to keep the game alive. And it looks like OUG Mike is going to be turning on to him. And this is a nightmare scenario for Wolf CDY right now he's into yet another hottie here and not only is he into the hottie he's into the hottie with the vermilion birds my cdy trying to get the read here doesn't get it mike has just got his number cdy is gonna get parried as well by mike mike has just got this on lock he needs to find one hit here on the cdy cdy with the old active here is trying to go in can he find the uppercut but mike is gonna have the f and that's all he needs to clean it up ladies and gentlemen unfortunately that is gonna be wolf cdy heading up back to the lobby like i said nightmare scenario for a boy panda man crazy crazy play for mike the min maxing from mike he gets a, gets that parry with the fan knowing that panda man has the gold combo break with that ultimate charge and he switches to his gold hong sword and with that terrain elevation is able to get the nice lmb stab into the chest for that maximum damage it ends up being a huge difference just because the threat of the tod is the only thing cdy has to bank off and just with that gold f chip damage mike is able to secure the kill and send him packing there's 
there's a reason why certain characters are meta right now. Mike on the hottie. There's just too much pressure coming out for the move. this character. So much utility is possible right now. Tessa ults can be invested first against the world. No love from Mike. Hottie on hottie violence oh. right now. WBG Spider as well coming in with a Temio. Where can he go? He's a bird stuck in a snare. Mike able to find that kill though. Frustrating situation for Spider setting up the web perfectly, but his op, his main competition, Mike, ends up yoinking that kill from him. Yeah, speaking of turning up the heat, that's exactly what Mike's been able to do here post head into that realm of Yang. Mike trying to keep the pressure up on the spider here. Knows he doesn't have that ultimate. This is a good situation for him. Verse coming back in as well. Spider's just trying to break away from this. He needs to not get locked onto by any of these players. 7% ult charge is not going to be good for him. But the problem is, is he does have that Yang depletion. Two minutes and at 34 seconds. And he has to find an elimination. Unfortunately for him, it was OUG's Mike who was able to take that bloom away from him as well as the elimination so spider is against the wall right now he's gonna come in try to turn on to drg's fong as soon as he finds him here looks for the scale rush fong just trying to break away here doing what fong does best with the movement we're gonna see the f invested to knock spider away spider unfortunately gonna get caught out there on the buttery rocks not the movement he was looking for is gonna have to look for a new target and quickly with two minutes remaining on the yang depletion he's looking for anybody to lock it in on here fong just can completely broken away here now spider's got to turn on to jails as as gonna find the scale rush into the charge rmb off of the fan spider feeling forced to use the f already and now mike gonna come back in with a fan of his own both of them gonna turn on to wbg spider spider knows he can't turn this corner here as has got the read comes around and spider now stuck between a rock and a hard place with jails as and ug's mike mike just turns it on to spider spider gets spent back to the lobby and now mike in a situation three percent away from old he's got the F investment. He's got the ult investment. Mike is going to clean up that elimination and just slip away as he looks to take a dominating lead here in game number two. Five kills on OUG's Mike. Just deleting Spider right there with a great flank play, but we're seeing Verse, my man, keeping toe to toe with the GOAT right now. New school versus old school. Shaw, the OG of Mike's op. Shaw always killing Mike off spawn, but now he's gonna be fighting against Verse. Harry's gonna be coming out in that audio. Big damage coming out, and JDG's Verse is gonna get taken down by KLA's T225. Jumping with the Tetsa. Big 30 party coming in, and we're seeing Fossibus coming in with the triple charge, the pole sword. Big damage with the hit coming in taking down gg shot and now it's 225 versus frost of 225 got what he wanted in got his ult on the tesla got the third party and we out of there both of these guys splitting the lead splitting the kills and we are happy going into this second realm of yang 225 and 5 225 and frostibus having a little bit of slow start going this game too but there's still seven more rounds going out will we get a second challenge going into this second realm of yang? last time we saw no one really wanted to go in there if they knew mike was waiting will we get a challenge with six people left alive yeah, i'm gonna tell mike there by the way doing a good job going to look for the edge for players potentially coming in from the outside doing what mike does best right he really likes to play gatekeeper for these players that head in uh from the zone late there we're gonna see drg's fong coming in we're gonna see him actually take the realm of yang here he's gonna go head to head against ouge's mike and this is a very interesting rivalry fong here has been known for absolutely griefing Mike out of lobbies here. So he, there's going to be a little bit of tension between these two players as Mike looks to go airborne here, trying to find some pistol shots to get a clean engagement into the fight. Neither player finding an opening into the fight just yet. We do see a little bit of chip damage going on to Mike. The F going to be invested. Mike able to work his way around it. Fong still finding more damage in the charge. RMB going to go for RMB into RMB. Both players trading. Fong still in the lead here. The parry coming out from Fong though. So huge damage the follow-up mike gonna be in a bad situation both of them going to pop it up here mike though with the ultimate fong just gonna hold on to the ultimate though he doesn't want to go ult for ult he's just gonna wait it out you know, so we see him looking to come in now mike gonna try to play this out for some huge damage fong able to get away from the dash another dash coming in from mike not able to find the damage he's looking for though gonna start going airborne to look for the healer he's able to get away and get at least one shield pot off he's gonna find the second one no he doesn't 
doesn't. He actually grabs onto the side. No, he does find it. I apologize here. Oh my goodness, this fight going absolutely crazy. DRG Fong, though, 18 seconds left remaining. He's still holding on to ult here. He needs to invest it soon if he wants to make something happen. Mike, with the movement, is just trying to take this to a stalemate here. And Fong may have misplayed here, not using the ultimate when Mike does. They're just going to go to the stalemate. Fong looks to grief Mike, but he griefs himself. Half a break. You see Fong realize that Mike is going to choose not to engage. You see the sense of panic. What options do I have right now? But we're going to be going to round two. The saltiest of runbacks. No buff. Equal on equal. Parry off is going to come out. This time, winner will take all. Mike going to open up with the LD. This time, Fong not making the same mistake. We ult in, baby. We get in there. Claws coming out. Mike going in for a ride. Downhill is not going to get the nice follow-up. Now, Fong with the sustained pressure. Gold, that's going to be invested from Mike. Now, everything's going to be invested. Going for that ultimate he does have a lot of charge left here and fong has his work cut out, cut out for him he has to dodge this very very mobile hobby in midair he's able to get a half of, of the mech can he get the d-mech onto mike can he get him to the ground and fight a mono imana but instead fong faking the aggression is going to use that instant scale rush to his advantage trying to get out of there but mike keeping up the pressure bringing it back to even Fong, a little bit of an advantage right now. Both of them willing to take the heal. Still three minutes and 20 seconds. We are taking this to distance. No tie is going to be here. One, two, coming out. Mike on the Hong Sword versus Fong. Doesn't want to do the fan diddle with the Dagger Master himself. Half charge down is going to be coming out. Mike keeping up the pressure. He's getting shredded, though, by this fan. The light attack's coming out. Fong getting away with murder. But Mike bringing it back with an LMB release. He's down to a last hit scenario, though. He has to find a big opener right now. Fong... Doesn't have a combo break to his name. Now Mike piecing out. JL's AS showing up to the party. Both of these guys, the same thing coming out. Mike with the classic. Mike gets the armor swap. Pressure's being reversed. Armor swap for Fong as well. AS coming in with the third party. Same with Frost. The whole party is going to be showing up. Can Mike or... Can Mike or... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can Fong or Mike find the soul boom in this scenario? Harry is going to be coming out, but AS is going to come down with the sweeping pull strike and find the kill. Oh my goodness, so unfortunate for Fong, but I don't think Mike makes it out of the scenario either. Oh my goodness, he's able to get one pot off, but he gets the max. He's going to fall down, and oh, you just, Mike's going to go down to Alliance's Frost of his. Oh my goodness, Fong is so mad at himself right now. That said, with only three players left remaining alive in the lobby, I think the only way for somebody to take that MVP away from OUG's Mike is Frost of his has got to find all three eliminations on the field he's off to a good start though when he picks up the one on mike what a turn of events i mean the the run it back from fong and mike i don't think we could have asked for a better scenario coming out of the realm of yang they take the 1v1 but mike as always has got the armor in the back pocket he knows where he is on the map he knows how to take those mental notes and he never forgets the man is like an that elephant raven some high sodium contact with with the with the saltiest of salty <laughs> run backs, the high blood pressure coming in with the pulse or third parties left and right those two are just like let us kill each other first we've been going at it no sir that's not how it's gonna go down the pulse or third party big part of this solo meta right now just the the giant chunky damage of that highly mobile rmb focus <laughs> attacks just absolutely coming in and deleting those two's honorable duel you even see them coming out of the rebel yeah just parry off just like all right no more ties here mike a little bit with momentum it's always a little bit frustrating when you time out your opponent one of the worst ways to go but we're playing for keeps right now we're playing for eighty thousand dollars we want this win and i respect fong for taking up the challenge and going against mike and the skill level Same. super super equal i i don't think mike is the best fan dueler within uh, MBPL. I think Fong is definitely up there in top three. Spider as well. Frost of us as well. But Mike, Mike's overall game sense, that armor reset keeps him in. And I think that's something he still has a huge edge on of everyone. He remembers the map super super perfectly he utilizes every piece of mechanic within the Raka, but the armor swap always stands out in this clutch situations yeah i mean it, he really does a great job of that and i mean it's something i i've started doing
Like, I, you know, you watch these games, you pick up things from the pros. I often leave pings just on the map for an eternity to remind myself, hey, there's an armor there if I need to run back to it. And it's something I've learned just from watching Mike, right? Like, he really does have incredible game sense coming through. But like you said, you got to give it to DRG's Fong for kind of taking the salty yet honorable 1v1 coming out of the Realm of Yang there. But he's kicking himself right now, right? As we cut back, we're going to see the other Realm of Yang earlier between OUG's Mike and KLA's T225. Mike just in a really strong situation here with the Nunchucks as well. I actually think the Nunchucks have a clear advantage into the fan as well. We see T225 go ahead and swap to that Hong Sword after getting buried out here. And Mike just cleans this up real easy. Uh, but back to my point about Fong, I, Fong's kicking himself right now. He had that ultimate online when the hottie goes up and uses his ultimate. There was no reason in the world that DRG's Fong should not have just immediately ulted to have the advantage in the ult for ult trade-off there. Even just the movement on being able to use the V, if he had been able to catch Mike even once, that would have been it. He would have cleaned up uh, that fight, but he just holds on to it and he suffers the punishment for it when Mike decides, cool, I'm just not going to take the fight if you're not going to ult. Now, going to this last little bit, can Frostfist steal away the MVP? All of his rivals are in the grave right now. Can 225, the ultimate Dark Horse, bring this back? He is on the Tesla. We see that armor swap lurking in the shadows. Can he referee this lobby? This is a perfect scenario. Three Tesla's alive. Frostfist has his work cut out for him. When you're the only Akos left standing and you had three Tesla's, this is kind of nightmare scenario as Akos. The second you get invested on, it's very hard to get a reset. So who do you take down when it comes to all these Tesla's? We're getting in another very, very buttery rock end game. Multiple layers going down. Nowhere really safe to hide, but you see these Tesla's looking around for where that Akos is hiding right now. Frostum is doing a good job using that extra mobility that he gets from staff to buy some time right now. Every little point matters right now. Uh, going into the match point scenarios in the previous weeklies, going into like a game six, game seven, where you're one point off from getting the match point is super disheartening. So every placement point in these early games do make a huge difference in the long run. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We're going to cut back over here to KLA's T25 in a fight earlier with XCG's Wang Liang. And I do believe this is where Wang Liang goes out. He's extremely low here with Verse T225 on him. And it is going to be a Verse who's able to pick up that elimination uh, off of that. T225 misses out on the opportunity to pick up his second elimination and potentially clutch out this lobby with the MVP. Because I do believe even if he takes first place uh, with four eliminations right now, if he picks up all three kills here, it's not going to be enough. Uh, to keep Mike from taking the MVP. He was going to miss it by like 0. 0.2 points or something like that. I think the only player who's in contention from taking that MVP away is going to be Alliance's Frostivus. And Frostivus needs it right now if he wants to find his way back into this game. So heading into game three, he can look to start prepping for that match point. Yeah, JJH star. Crit critical point for him. Can he find the win right now? He is going against the veterans, AS and 225. They've been here multiple layers before. AS does have the gold armor advantage, does have the gold Hong sword on here, but this is a very, very volatile endgame with Tessas everywhere yeah. on the deck. The win condition, pretty tough for all of these characters none of them have really a big heal frostivus if he does get this heal off his tiger it's gonna force him into the zone so going into this last little bit i feel like the tezas are a little bit incentivized to force this Akos out and possibly oh. and like i said the double bow shots coming out for Austin smirking the family plan is going to be going off from him all oh, first all it's going to be coming out can he fade can he deny some of this damage being on the corner he does use the buttery rock to his advantage but the big damage from that pole star is going to come out looking for a little bit of siphon with the tiger not able to get it he is going to have that merciless coming out gold f's going to be coming out from 225 denying the merciless now for Austin trying to wait it out but he has six tesla all to go on a poor tiger against the oh, wall kind the of, and this wild creature hold his way out f1's gonna be invested mercer's gonna be coming out knocking the tesla's into the zone 225 flying to the zone unfortunately for him getting the short end of the stick with jl's as picking up the kill now 225 has to fade the pressure from the his two tesla members it doesn't look like star realizes though that 225 is 
low, and he's going to miss a big opportunity to take out a big piece off this chessboard. Yeah, this is absolutely unfortunate for Alliances for also Just like you said, being the only Akos here, you really have to wait for the opportune moment to catch somebody off guard. These Tessas are not going to fight each other and give you the opportunity to third party. He thinks he sees an opportunity to turn on to JJH star. Unfortunately, he's just a little too impatient. I think he goes in a little too early here, and because of that, he gets caught out in the middle. We see those bow shots ring through, and post that, there's not really anything Frostivis can do. I think he stay alive. He stayed alive longer than he really should have there. He just played it out really, really well, but like I said, unfortunately, those three tests just make it nigh impossible for you to do anything. Even when he lands the Tiger form, right? He just can't get the heal off of it either because that Tessa ultimate keeps him from going the distance. And man, it's a tough situation for any player to be in, much less Alliances for all of us here. But now we are gonna see these three just wait for this final moment. We're gonna see kind of an ult off uh, play out here between Star T225 and AS. AS in a decent position to take second place here. If he can pick up both of these other eliminations, it's going to be really hard for any one of these tests to sort of take control of this final circle. JL's AS does have that legendary pole sword uh, that he was able to take off of Frostivus, though, and this is going to put him in a good situation if that circle pushes towards the edge of that cliff. That scale rush really going to buy him a lot of safety and a lot of damage as the zone starts to push forward here. We do see the ult invested. AS going to try to go for it. Can't quite find the scale rush as T2-5 finds the intro into it. AS will be walking into the wall. We are going to see the miss coming in off the fan, but AS goes extremely low here. He's got to find something. He does find the ultimate. He's going to use that to buy some space for himself, but unfortunately, JJH is star with the triple charge. Breaksword comes in and says it's cool. t 2 2 Five isn't gonna come after you, but I will start with a huge parry. And he doesn't get cut here by the terrain. He's absolutely in a huge position here. He's got ult yet again. He's gonna catch TG25 with it. He's gonna protect it from the zone. TG25, if he wants to cancel it, has to go into the zone. He can't star. Knocks him into the zone. Goes for the assassin's lunge and misses it though. This is gonna be it. It's gonna come down to this moment here. TG25 trying to take control of it with the fan. Star will find an intro. Bumps him into the zone. That single ticket damage is gonna do a lot of work, but the the parry from T225 basically clutches it up. Star able to find the dodge, but doesn't find the dodge off the F. Kayla's T225 will find another elimination here, but I do believe that MVP is going to go to OUG's Mike.